First of all, patients like high-end medicine. They like the buzzword individualized therapy, which we've used for quite some time, which now really turns into reality. We're not just talking about individualized medicine, medicine anymore. We're use, utilizing it. When I talk to patients, normally I talk about chemotherapy, one size fits all. Um, when I talk about the gene panel test, I actually try to see, we try to find out what really drives your cancer. What is specific of this cancer, of your cancer compared to other cancers, which can help us make treatment decisions. And first of all, we utilize it in a very practical way right now because some of the drugs we use, for instance, in colorectal cancer requires extensive gene panel testing for NRAS and KRAS mutation, BRAF mutation, perhaps pic 3 ca mutations. This is actually becoming standard of care. It's already integrated in guidelines. So we use it for practical treatment decisions at this very point. Now, the test gives, be, it goes beyond just these NRAS, KRAS uh, gene panel testing. It allows us to potentially identify therapies which can help specific patients based on the molecular makeup of their cancers. We might utilize drugs which are approved, for instance, in, in melanoma in a, under other indication than approved, off-label, but rational off-label use, not just empiric, but targeted toward patients' tumor and molecular alterations. So when we get the results of the genome panel testing back, and we look through the genetic alteration the cancer has, and we try to identify what's called driver mutations. Are there any mutations which really drives biologic behavior of this cancer? Then we try to correlate that with drugs that are available that can inhibit certain pathways downstream. We think of cancer more and more as a pathway-driven disease. So we have certain factors that cancer cells kind of integrate from the outside and move toward the inside of a cancer cell, change genetic programming, etc. So we try to use pathway inhibitors based on the specific alterations that drive these pathways in, in cancer cells. So we have a lot of drugs actually that are available as pathway inhibitors in various diseases like thyroid cancer, like uh, uh, liver cancer, like lung cancer, etc. The key issue now is to identify alterations in cancers that can be utilized across different tumor entities. We're really redefining cancer not based on location where it originated from, but like this gene panel test will help us find similarities between breast cancer, certain breast cancers and colon cancers and lung cancers and thyroid cancers and the utilized treatment options that are available that patients might benefit from. So when we started discussing what kind of gene panel uh, array and what kind of uh, panel we would like to have, we actually integrated a lot of input from clinicians, patient, people who see patients who uh, try to be up to date on the current literature about targeted agents, etc. So the idea which genes get included in this panel actually came from the practicing oncologists who actually sees patients. So there was a back and forth and integrated process between laboratory uh, and, and clinical physicians. And uh, we came up with a, a gene panel test, which I think is specific enough not to create too much noise. Because the problem that I see with some of these, let's say, extended gene panel testing, it creates a lot of information that have, bears no clinical relevance. And then it leads to misinterpretation. So the integration of this gene panel test into a clinical environment with appropriate interpretation, I think, is the strength of this test. Now, we all hope that next-gen sequencing will kind of leapfrog us beyond our current state and will really revolutionize uh, the way we treat cancer patients and other patients. This goes beyond uh, cancer, beyond oncology and hematology. So I like to get more information about the specific cancer I treat in patients with the emergence of more and more targeted treatment options to target specific alteration, genetic alterations, overexpressions, amplifications, etc., uh, activation of pathways. With the emergence of more and more of these options, we need to understand our patients, our cancer, better. And next-gen sequencing really has a lot of promise to really leapfrog us beyond where we are right now.